just wonder what it would be like just to kill someone. I see the life just drain out of someone. I wonder. She, th she deserves the death penalty. She got to go. She's cooked. Everybody coming down cooked. That's crazy. Hey, I got a bone to pick with you, my boy. Somebody in my comment section, my last video said, Zars, why your forehead so shiny? <laughs> Oh, you think that's funny? And y'all ain't back me up either. Y'all think it's funny? <laughs> y'all think it's funny? You think it's funny? You, you, you think it's funny? I'm playing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. Y'all, kitty. Gang. Yo, gang, real live on Twitch. Y'all better follow my Twitch, y'all. <laughs> hey, I ain't gonna tell you again and follow my Twitch channel, bro. I'll come and boot my show. Everybody spam W's in chat right now if I got a big forehead. Stop spamming W's on my big forehead, bro. Dangerous kids reacting to the live synthesis, bro. Let's see what they're talking about. Let's see what they're talking I'm about. I'm very tempted to just say, I'm not going to accept this sentence agreement. We'll go to trial. And if you're convicted of felony murder, you'll go to prison for the rest of your life. That means you'll die there. That's what I'm tempted to do. Bro, what is happening? You don't die in prison? At 16, you knew not to keep pounding your fist on that pillow with that little baby's head there. That little boy had to be terrified. He beat a child? A baby? I really didn't. I really think I did that. I didn't mean to hurt him. Imagine, imagine putting your hands on a kid. Imagine. 14 year old Philip Chisholm. He is pure evil and evil can never be rehabilitated. Bang. He must imprison this killer for the rest of his life. A ninth grader who's in court for murdering his 24 year old school math teacher. Colleen Ritzer on October 22nd, 2013. Colleen was known for her dedication to her students. And on that fateful day, she had asked Chisholm to stay after school for additional lessons. Little did she know that her kindness would lead to a horrific end. No. Chisholm came prepared with a knife, a change of clothes and gloves. He followed her into a restroom where he took her life. His brutality didn't stop there. He robbed, assaulted and abused her. Afterward, he disposed of her lifeless body placing it in a garbage bin and dragging it behind the school. How deep you have to, what kind of beef that she had with the mans, bro? They had some real beef around here. Chat, am I lying though? Am I lying? I feel bad for the teacher, bro. In a futile attempt to cover up his crimes, Chisholm went into town and used Richard's credit card to buy a movie ticket. However, he was traced down and arrested by the police the next morning. He still had Colleen's blood on his hands. While the magnitude of Chisholm's crimes is daunting. Look at this man right here, bro. This is a menace to society right here, good gang. This is a menace to society right here. You have cameras on you, bro. You're not getting away from that. Am I lying though? Behavior will leave you in disbelief. Philip Chisholm faced multiple charges, including murder, aggravated rape, and armed robbery. <gasps> Throughout the court proceedings, Chisholm displayed a shocking lack of remorse, even as the victim's father read his statement. Killer knew exactly what he was doing and has never shown remorse. His demeanor and actions demonstrated a complete disregard for the gravity of his crimes and the immeasurable pain wow, he had man. inflicted on Colleen Ritzer's family. Even in the face of a touching good, tribute Jesse. by Colleen's brother. Put this animal behind bars to the maximum possible sentence. Do not give this coward the opportunity to shatter another family's lives. Chisholm remained cold and unrepentant. His attorneys claimed that he didn't even apologize, bro. He didn't even apologize. Praise God to that family, man. That's crazy. This is a very sad situation, man. He was mentally unstable. But that didn't work. Hell In no, no mental it don't work. The court will impose the mandatory life sentence for the murder of Colleen Ritzer and set a parole eligibility date of 25 years, the highest level our law allows. However, huh? while Chisholm's reaction could certainly be dismissed as an effect of a mental illness, the same can't be said. Man, people always say mental illness, bro. 25 years is too. That teacher did nothing wrong to that boy, man, to do that, which is crazy. Am I lying, though? Like, let me know in the comment section if I'm bugging or not, bro. 25 years seem a little bit too light for what he did. He said for the case of 19 year old Brandon Spencer, who allegedly started shooting at a crowded Halloween party on the campus of the University of Southern California in Los Angeles. I'm sorry for having you under, but you like prison. Four individuals were injured in the shooting, but fortunately, there were no fatalities. That if you are so intent on killing someone, that you're willing to shoot them, and at the same time, open fire into a crowd. Following the shooting, I mean, if you open fire into a crowd, bro, you want to, you know what I'm saying, take somebody's life. That's, that's just facts. Spencer was detained by the Los Angeles Police Department for questioning. A couple of days later, he was charged with four counts of attempted murder. The prosecution argued during the trial 
The shooting was the result of an ongoing feud between What's Spencer look? and a rival gang member, noting that Spencer himself was. I want to snap his bald head, bro. Hang on, I just want. I just want to. I'm playing. Let me stop. That Spencer himself was a documented and well-known gang member. I'm not a bad person, but I made a mistake. That's a that's a crazy mistake. Despite the horrifying nature of Spencer's offenses, his actions during the trial managed to shock everyone present. Throughout the trial, Spencer maintained his innocence, but the jury disagreed. Spencer also pleaded his case. The judge sentenced Brandon Spencer to 40 years to life in prison for the four counts of attempted murder. When Spencer heard his sentence, this was his reaction. However, I know it's for it hurting my boy. Yeah, you, you bum pegs. All right. You can't shoot into a crowd and not get no consequences. My boy, that's not how life works. You said my first time watching you. Twitch, I love you, man. Everybody spam W. OK, man. That's his name in chat. W. OK, man. While Spencer's behavior raised eyebrows, it's nothing compared to the explosive actions of 15 year old Conrad Schaefer. They're so young. This was a 15. They are so young throwing their lives away for what? They're so young, bro. Bro, I meant back in my hand, I was 15 years old. I was, I was with a cracking Fortnite, cracking nines on Fortnite like, like a seafood, my boy. I was going crazy on the game. I, bro, I didn't know what a gun was. 15 year old who was out, semi automatic rifle shooting up. Schaefer shocked Osceola County when he and his friends began randomly shooting at the residents resulting in the tragic death of 17-year-old David Guerrero, who was on his way to work. Before the shootings, Schaefer had persuaded his father to purchase a 45 caliber high-point carbine and 100 rounds of ammunition. He allegedly took the gun from his house while his father was asleep, marking the beginning of the neighborhood's nightmare. Conrad Schaefer and three of his friends, David Damas, Victoria Rios, and Juan Muriel, terrorized the community for two weeks. They even invaded 22-year-old Eric Rupnarine's home and fatally shot him. During his trial, Schaefer had this to say to the families of the victims. I right, look at this man. You cannot seriously say he's not a school shooter, bro. Just look at this man, bro. He played too much Call of Duty, my boy. He played too much Call, bro. He played too much. 15 at the time, I'm really sorry for the things I've done. And I know that they're wrong. And I know my apologies don't mean nothing to you. He don't care. I know they even change how you feel about me. Family of care. Eric Rupnarine also seem to agree. I request my grandson, he was my helper to me and my wife. At this time, my family and I had no intention to forgive the guilty because of such a heinous and brutal crime that was done to my grandson, Eric Krupnerine. Schaefer eventually pleaded guilty to two counts of first degree murder with over mm -hmm. 22 incidents of gunfire damaging homes and vehicles. He was sentenced to two consecutive life sentences <gasps> with the judge stating that if Schaefer had been just three years older, he would have received the death penalty. To be honest, he probably should have got it. I'm not gonna lie, that's two lives, gang. That's two lives right there, my boy. If you can't say you're sorry, you if you're sorry, you wouldn't have done it at all, bro. Ever. Conrad Schaefer isn't alone in their courtroom actions. Let's not forget the infamous incident involving 15-year-old Martise Fuller, who's facing charges including murder in Kenosha County, Wisconsin. Dang, man. I stopped in my doorway and I looked at him and I said, Oh my god, Martise. I said, please, you don't have to do this. And he looked at me and he said, yes, I do. Fuller broke into his ex-girlfriend's house with a handgun. What? And fatally shot his ex-girlfriend in her bedroom while she was listening to music. Her mother, who rushed to the scene. Bro, how cold you gotta be, bro? You shot your girl, bro? She had to shit on you with Tyrone's, bro. She had to shit on you like crazy. I ain't gonna lie, like, hey, the only time I be tight about a girl, bro, if she, if, 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 if you walk in, you know what I'm saying, her getting smashed by 10 dudes in one room, my boy. At that point, bro, I'm pulling out the biggest switch in my life, bro. I'm gonna start doing hula hoops, you know? <laughs> Seen upon hearing the gunshots, confronted the assailant and was shot twice, but survived. During the trial, he showed little emotion. Fuller pleaded not guilty, but the jury ultimately found him guilty on three counts. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of first-degree intentional homicide. At his sentencing, Fuller, perhaps for the first time in the courtroom, displayed some emotion. However, he continued to assert his innocence and delivered a statement through his attorney, expressing his apologies to the family. Mr. Fuller's prepared a statement that he asked that I read on his behalf. Martise writes, wholeheartedly, I wanted to write this giving my sincerest apologies to this family I once shared time and love with. Truthfully, I am sorry about the pain you've all suffered through this. 
but more importantly all right let's be real who wrote this for him hey i gonna be real with you chat who wrote this for bro right here like look at him he, he has no emotion at all bro people are really good actors when their life is at stake right here the loss of my ex-girlfriend kaylee that i loved too so i'm sorry despite the hatred that is against me i still am sorry but i have to continue to stand innocent because i am and i know that i've barely showed emotion throughout my time but in all honesty it is because it's hard to have tears left to cry knowing my mom lost a son one of her children too but i am sorry and i hope you all can eventually see in your hearts and vision that i am not the person the media has made me out to be the judge you can't say you love someone you love them and you care for them and you still murder them how that work two and two don't go together gang which however wasn't convinced that Fuller could do better in the future. You are a very dangerous and a damaged human being. Facts. So in the interest of protecting the public, acknowledging the seriousness of these acts, the court orders that on count one, you are sentenced to life in prison without eligibility for extended supervision. Despite the gravity Dang. of his sentence, Fuller appeared largely unaffected. However, as we saw Fuller's unconcern with his sentence, it brings to mind the- He didn't, he didn't care. He didn't cry at all. He just like, cool, I have to be life in prison. I'm gonna die in prison. Boom. Strikingly similar Congrats, response man. of Jennifer Me. When I walked off, I was to the corner. I heard the first gun shot after the first gun shot. I ran. At 15, Jennifer Me became popular as the hiccup girl due to her sudden bout of uncontrollable hiccups. She even appeared on shows and events. Eventually, she was cured her popularity ended. But Jennifer wasn't satisfied. She needed the fame. So she and her boyfriend, Lamont Newton, and another friend, Lauren Rayford, set up a robbery with victims yeah, she had met online. The trio lured a 22-year-old man to a vacant home where they robbed and fatally shot him, taking $50 wow. as the reward. Wow, you want to claw so bad, you want to murder someone and take 50 bucks. Nice, and your life is cooked now, bro. The things people would do for clout is crazy. You got to be careful, bro. You got to be careful who you make famous. You got to be careful, bro. As if Jennifer's offenses weren't enough, her demeanor in court will leave you dumbfounded. At 19 years old, she was arrested on charges of first-degree murder. During her trial, this recorded call she made to her mother while in detention was played for the jury. Hello? Hi, Mama. Hello, Jennifer. What's going on? I'm in jail. Why are you in jail? Jennifer was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. Jennifer's co-defendants, Rayford and Newton, were also sentenced to life imprisonment for their roles mm -hmm. in the murder. Yep. However, when emotions run high in court, the actions of Jennifer Mee and Alyssa Bustamante leave us questioning sanity itself. Was her throat cut? And Alyssa said yes. And that's when grandmother, uh, the grandmother broke down and began crying. Alyssa Bustamante was a troubled 15-year-old girl. They're so young, bro. Like, they're so young. Like, you're, what are you doing 15 going crazy like this, my boy? See, these kids, you need to stop playing these games out here, bro. Y'all think it's okay in real life to do it, my boy. When you die in real life, you, you gone. You don't respond against GTA, my boy. You're gonna be gone. Six be under. Grandparents and siblings in St. Martins, Missouri. On October 21st, 2009, Bustamante lured her nine-year-old neighbor, Elizabeth Olton, into the woods behind her house. She strangled, stabbed, and slit the throat of the innocent girl, then buried her in a pre-dug grave. I just wonder what it would be like just to kill someone. See the life was drained out of someone, I wonder. She, th she deserves the death penalty. She gotta go, she's cooked. Everybody coming down cooked in the comment section, bro. That's crazy. Then went to a church dance as if nothing had happened. If you thought Bustamante's crimes were reprehensible, brace yourself for her shocking conduct during the proceedings. The police found Olton's body two days later after Bustamante confessed to the murder. She was arrested and charged with first-degree murder and armed criminal action. She pleaded guilty to a reduced charge of second-degree murder in exchange for avoiding a trial and a possible life sentence without parole. At her sentencing hearing, Bustamante apologized to Olson's family and said she regretted her actions. However, the judge was not moved by nah. her remorse and sentenced her to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 35 years. 
She will be eligible for release in 2054. She will be 60 years old. Oh However, my god. Let's compare the jaw dropping reaction of Bustamante. That's her whole life gone. Just like that. 60 years old, bro. Bro, 2055, bro. That doesn't sound right in my mind, bro. It's 2024 right now. Bro, you're gonna be behind bars, not see the light of day for that many years. To the astonishing behavior of 19 Crazy. Nicholas Cruz. My name is Nick, and I'm gonna be the next school shooter of 2018. My goal is at least 20 people with an AR-15 and a couple tracer rounds. A gunman. This man is on a whole Call of Duty mission right here, bro. And the fact that you recorded that beforehand is insane. Psychotic, bro. He kind of looked like a school shooter from when I first looked at him. Who carried out the deadliest high school shooting in U.S. history? Cruz killed 17 people and wounded 17 others at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. He better get the chair. 14th, 2018. He better get the chair. And he was the automatic rifle that he had legally purchased a year earlier. I came out and asked him, what are you going to do with the rifle? And the reply was, I go shooting with my friends on the weekends. I just want my own stuff. Despite the horrifying nature of Cruz's offenses, his actions during sentencing managed to shock. Every this is a psychotic man. Does he look, does he look he like Jeffrey Dahmer by the face? Everyone present. Cruz was arrested and charged with 17 counts of premeditated first degree murder and 17 counts of attempted first degree murder. He pleaded guilty to all the charges, admitting his responsibility for the massacre. What's going on today, bro? Uh, the, the demons, man. Demons? Voices. Voices and demons? Where's the voices? Where the am I? Holy shit. What happened? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> the cop says, shut up. He know he on BS, bro. He know he on BS, bro. W cop. Everybody coming out, W cop in the comment section right now. Verdict on whether to recommend the death penalty for Cruz. As a result, he was automatically sentenced to life in prison without oh my gosh, bro. Parole for each of the 17 murders as required by Florida law. He was also sentenced to an additional 34 life sentences for the attempted murders. At his sentencing, Cruz attempted an apology. I am very sorry for what I did, and I have to live with it every day. Oh my and that God! Is why we're getting oh hell no, man! Help others, and I am doing this for you. And I do not care if you do not believe me. And I love you. And I know you don't believe me, but I have to live with this every day. Cruz showed no remorse. Let's be real. I think bro should get the no, the chair. 100. The chair. That's 17 lives gone, bro. And you get life in prison. But the other chick earlier got 25 years. Empathy for his actions, and instead wore a red prison jumpsuit, glasses, and a mask. <laughs> Yo, he monkey is crazy. At one point during the proceeding. He laughed. Cruz's lack of emotion and his escape from the death penalty outraged and disappointed many of the victim's relatives who had hoped for a different outcome. However, while it was clear that Cruz didn't care about the years he was going to spend in jail, his behavior in court was very different to that of 19-year-old Keandra Cook, a high school student who used a dating app to set up a robbery scheme with her boyfriend, Kendrick Bass. Cook lured Perry Nida, a Palm Coast man, to a secluded spot in South Daytona, where Bass and others attacked him and his friend, Emmanuel Purcell, who had accompanied him. Bass shot Purcell in the chest, but luckily he survived. However, what Cook did in the courtroom was even crazier. Cook was arrested and charged with principal to carjacking with a deadly weapon and principal to aggravated battery with a deadly weapon. Okay, of all three charges, sentence you to 20 years in state prison. <laughs> Who crying in the background, bro? Like, what is that to be upset about? Make it make sense, my boy. <laughs> Cook was later allowed to withdraw her plea and cooperate with the state to testify against Bass, who was also charged with attempted murder. She entered a new plea deal and received a reduced sentence of 11 years in prison and 20 years of probation. Oh, she apologized years. to the victims and their families. I just want to say that I'm sorry to do wrong. That person that did show that I didn't even know you committed. Bruh, ain't no way. This wild game. However, they have a new followers too, man. This was the only man. time a convict freaked out during their sentencing. Take, for example, the case of 18-year-old Donta Wright, a teenager who was involved in the murder of Jordan Clee a high school student and athlete in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Wright and two other youths planned to rob Klee of his drugs, clothes, and shoes, but Klee fought back. Wright then shot him in the back of the head. 
assaulting him instantly. Just when you thought Wright couldn't sink any lower, his behavior in the courtroom will leave you stunned. Is he smiling? How do you do that and smile? Wright was arrested and charged with felony murder, armed robbery, conspiracy to commit armed robbery, and felony firearm possession. The family of the victim read a very emotional victim impact statement. Yeah, but this gangster. is how serious Wright felt about their pain. Sincerely hope that whatever it was you wanted so badly that you felt the need to murder my son was worth the next at least 52 years of your continuing. There's no way this man sitting here lollygagging and smiling in front of these people, mamas and bro, and family after you just committed that, bro. That's insane. You won't get the luxury of raising your child. Look at him. When he was called to address the court, Wright shocked everyone. I'm going to tell y'all. I'll be home soon or I'll be Keon. I love my family. That's all you got to say. Wright showed no wow, emotion. Wow, bro, that's his sad. Actions. His attitude in court shocked and angered the judge and wow. the victim's family. That's crazy, the judge bro. Reserved some Dang. choice words for him. I'm very tempted to just say I'm not going to accept this sentence agreement. We'll go to trial. And if you're convicted of felony murder, you'll go to prison for the rest of your life. That means you'll die there. That's what I'm tempted to do. Wright was eventually sentenced to 25 to 52 mm -hmm. years in prison for his role in the murder. 52 years, 25, bro. Life, bro. Life. His life is cooked, bro. It's gone. It's nothing compared to the explosive actions of 13 year old Antonio Barbo. They're so young, bro. Oh my gosh, they're so young. Year -old Nathan they're so Bob young. Their trial. She said that she's going to have to call Antonio's mom. And Antonio kept looking at me, and then he hit her in the head. In September 2012, Antonio and Nathan conspired to and brutally murdered Antonio's great-grandmother, 76-year-old Barbara Olson. The kids bludgeoned her to death using a wow. hammer and a hatchet, then wow. stole her purse. What's even more chilling is that after committing this heinous crime, they used part of the stolen money to buy marijuana and pizza. We were going to try to scare her to get money and then use force if needed. When you say use force if needed, was there a discussion about what type of force you might use? Um, an attack, uh, I guess, to kill. During the legal proceedings, Antonio That's wild, Barlow bro. changed his plea from not guilty by bro. reason of mental illness Goofy hairstyle, man. to no contest, reaching an agreement with the prosecution. However, he was very remorseful. I know I don't show my emotions much. I myself am not sure why, but that doesn't mean I don't. This man don't care, bro. He doesn't care. Let's be real. He does not care. And that's sad. That's that's very sad. Why are, why are people like this in the world, man? To let off his chest. I just want to say that I'm truly sorry for everything that happened. However, despite his plea and expressions of remorse, he and Nathan were sentenced to life imprisonment. They were both remorseful as they left the court. However, just when you thought you'd seen it all, Another convict surpasses Antonio and Nathan's wild courtroom display. Um, as I approached, I got closer. I saw her really sniffing at a particular area. So I pulled her back, and when I looked, kind of second-guessed myself. You know, I thought I saw a dead body, but I wasn't too sure because, uh, you know, was missing some limbs. How do you casually say, oh, the body's missing some limbs? How psychotic you have to be to say that and see that and do that, bro? I, my stomach, I could not handle that, bro. Old Matthew Borges was facing a murder charge for the beheading of 16-year-old Lee Valoria Paulino in December 2016. Borges and Paulino were students at Lawrence High School and had reportedly smoked marijuana together in November 2016, which was the last time Paulino was seen alive. Paulino's body was discovered by a dog walker near the Merrimack River two weeks after he went missing. The details of the scene were chilling. Listen as the dog walker explained what he saw. Um, as I approached, I got closer. I saw her really sniffing at a particular area. So I pulled her back, and when I looked, kind of second-guessed myself. You know, I thought I saw a dead body, but I wasn't too sure because, uh, you know, was missing some limbs. At first, Borges was not considered a suspect, but the tide of evidence began pointing unmistakably in his direction. During the trial, a prosecutor, Jay Gabito, argued that there was an overwhelming amount of evidence incriminating Borges. The allegations against Borges were disturbing. It was suggested that he had stabbed Paulino multiple times before decapitating him. When the verdict was delivered, Borges displayed an eerie lack of emotion. It's a 
the defendant Matthew that is Borges crazy bro is guilty on the charge of first degree murder eventually he was found guilty of first degree murder and sentenced to life imprisonment with the possibility of parole only after serving 30 years that is so thinking about it, 30 years you watching this video you was not alive 30 years ago think about how long how long that's gonna be bro behind a jail cell however shocking Borges's reaction to his sentence was how does it compare to the reaction of 16-year-old Dylan Schumacher, who was in Buffalo, New York courthouse? I am a 16-year-old blonde. Probably all I have to do is cry in front of the jury, and they're going to feel sorry for me. He's cooked. He's cooked. Everybody coming out cooked. He's cooked. Charges of second-degree murder. In March 2013, Schumacher was babysitting his 18-year-old girlfriend's child while she went to work. He was inside a Springville home shared with his parents. Tragically, that evening, Schumacher beat the 23-month-old Austin to death. Following this horrifying incident, Schumacher was arrested and charged with the murder of the toddler, along with child abuse charges. Bro deserves a chair right now, man. That little bitty kid, man. That little bitty kid, bro deserves a chair. Yo, who can agree with me, man? Let's be real. A little bitty baby, imagine. Schumacher claimed he didn't intend to harm the child or cause his death, stating that he was trying to get the child to stop crying. Wow, you just hit him and beat him. Not to keep pounding your fist on that pillow with that little baby's head there. That little boy had to be terrified. Probably he had a hard time breathing. And then you repeatedly punched him so hard as to cause his death by bleeding on the brain. If you thought Schumacher would be remorseful for his crimes, you're wrong. As Schumacher entered the courtroom for his sentencing, he couldn't even get settled behind the defense table before breaking into tears. That's right. Schumacher expressed how sorry he was for his actions. I take back what was done. I wish I could. I would give my life for Austin. However, he's a W actor. Yo, hey, everybody comment down. W actor in the comment section. Bro, it's a W actor, man. It was all an act, and the judge wasn't fooled. The judge pointed out a recorded phone call between Schumacher and his mother. The record will show that you admitted on July, that on July 23rd, 2013, in a phone call to your mother from the holding center, you stated, Despite his second attempt at an apology, shut that damn crime through the face, boy. You deserve to chair, my boy. Actor, look at him. Look at his eyes. You know he cooked. He's cooked, buddy. Schumacher was handed the maximum punishment of 25 years to life in prison. However, this sentence was later modified to 18 years to life. Bro, no However, way. While some may attribute Schumacher's reaction to juvenile delinquency, this is 18-year-old Shondell Jackson. <laughs> He's facing charges of murder in the Milwaukee County Courthouse. Jackson and his friend were out to rob when they crossed paths with 21-year-old Nathan Potter, a University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee college student heading to his apartment. The friends approached Potter, demanding money. Potter was only a student and had no money. When Jackson realized Potter had no cash to offer, he shot him, killing That's crazy, bro. Like, why, why shoot him, bro, like that, man? For, for no reason. All right, why? After the murder, Jackson fled to Mississippi, but was ultimately arrested, thanks to a tip from his uncle. We don't have enough time to think about a whole lot of things now. That'd be uncle. You just can't take nobody to life. You know, that, that just wrong. That's As wrong. If killing yeah, someone that's at wrong, 18 man. was not outrageous enough, Jackson's actions in court were even more dramatic. During his trial, Jackson's actions in the courtroom drew attention. Here, Jackson is gesturing towards the victim's family, totally unremorseful about his actions. Jackson was quickly escorted out of the courtroom, but as he was leaving, Jackson flashed a disturbing smile toward the grieving family. Now, at his sentencing, Jackson's mother had an opportunity to address the court. This is pure evil, bro. Pure evil, man. When I saw it on the news, I, I even cried. I'm like, oh my God, I can't imagine what that mother is going through. I never had a clue that my child had anything to do with it. My son is not a monster. He, he is not a monster. When Jackson yeah, I missed was something? given the opportunity to speak, Jackson surprised everyone. Apologize for my behavior. Please. Don't take my life from me. That's right. He don't care. In a last ditch attempt to save himself, Jackson pleaded for leniency and offered an apology for his actions. Now it is time for the judge to deliver his sentence. The need to protect the community, which I also fear for with Mr. Jackson, and I am going to sentence uh, Mr. 
Jackson to life imprisonment without possibility for extended supervision. I know that that is something that is reserved for the most serious of cases, and I... Jackson was sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility yep. of parole. Good. But when Jackson heard that he would be spending the rest of his life in prison, he couldn't contain his emotions. Good. You can't kill someone like that, man. Hey, she went flying, didn't it? Who'd Iverson win? Deputies had to intervene, restraining Jackson as his anger flared. Watch again. Dang. Jackson pushed this cop over. He threw a blow. This cop was able to wrestle him to the ground, while this officer here unbuckled his pepper spray and put it to work. Amidst the chaos, a member of Jackson's family has a shocking remark for the Potter family. Eventually, Jackson was led out of the court to spend the rest of his life behind bars. Good. But Nathan Potter's parents had a few things to say. Our little girl was afraid. She was afraid that he was going to try and kill one of us. I hope that as he spends the rest of his life in jail. Jackson's friend and accomplice pleaded guilty to acting as the lookout in the crime and received a 12-year sentence. Mm -hmm. Despite the terrible behavior of Good. Shondell's family in court, the uncle who tipped off the police maintained his stance despite threats. However, this wasn't the only time a convicted How you kid doing, freaked out during his sentencing. Bro, that's crazy. Everything that happened to him, he deserved it. One is the victim and the killer is your right granddaughter. Can you talk about that? Well, she's not my granddaughter. Take, for example, the case of 16-year-old Sierra Halseth and 18-year-old Aaron Guerrero. Where did the evil come that was bred into a soul that murders their own father? Who are facing multiple charges, including murder with a deadly weapon, arson, robbery with a deadly weapon, conspiracy to conduct robbery, and multiple counts of fraudulent use of credit or debit cards at the Regional Justice Center in Las Vegas. The teenage couple Dang. murdered Sierra's father, 45-year-old Daniel Halseth. They stabbed him over 60 times and attempted to burn his body in half. 60 times is pure, like, evil, bro. Like, that's evil, bro. You cannot say sorry to that, bro. You can't do that, man. You can't. House. Then they took his debit card and fled to Salt Lake City, indulged themselves, and opened a YouTube channel where they callously shared information like this. Day three <laughs> after murdering somebody. Whoa! Don't put that on camera. The teenagers dated in 2020, but their parents Evil. did not approve of the relationship, forcing them to end it. On April 9th, 2021, Daniel's lifeless body was discovered in the garage of his Las Vegas home. The teenagers were subsequently apprehended in Salt Lake City. Throughout the court proceedings, the behavior of Sierra was starkly different from that of Aaron. Aaron Guerrero seems to be emotionally breaking down. When he was allowed to speak, he had this to say. I ask for forgiveness and I get, as I get sentenced today, and I hope it brings you a little peace. Meanwhile, Sierra Halseth appeared disinterested. This girl right here is very, very lifeless, man. Has no soul, has no remorse at all. Did bored and detached from the gravity of the situation. She claimed that her father had physically and sexually abused her. He locks me in place and starts pushing me and hitting me around. Eventually, they were both found guilty by district judge Chiara Jones. 55 days credit for time served. That is a total aggregate sentence of life in the Nevada Department of Corrections with the possibility of parole after 22 years of good service. Mm -hmm. In order to pay $5,000 in restitution. Wow. For Sierra's grandmother, a lot has changed. You're in a tough spot. Thanks because for the follow, man. Thank you. Your son is the victim and the killer is your granddaughter. Can you talk about that? If you thought these reactions were shocking, you'd be amazed at this video. The top five biggest judge explosions of all time. Bro, that's insane, man. Bro, rest in peace to everyone that passed away in this video, man. And the people who are locked away, bro, this is fully deserved, man. Think about it, man. These kids are young, bro. Young. That's how you know you got so much influence, especially on these kids, man. These kids, they need, they need their families and their parents in their life, man. They need it bad. They got boys coming to the video, man. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Follow my Twitch, man, ZarsYT. I will see you guys in the next video.